The steam locomotive is one of man's most valuable tools. He uses it to move heavy freight trains and fast passenger trains. In reality, this locomotive is a powerful steam engine mounted on wheels. A cross-section model of a steam locomotive shows us the firebox, the boiler, the largest part of the locomotive, and the many fire tubes passing through the boiler, the throttle valve, the smoke box, the smoke stack, the steam chest, and the cylinder. Hot gases and smoke from the firebox pass through the fire tubes, heating the water in the boiler, through the smoke box, and out the smoke stack. As the water is heated by the hot fire tubes, it expands, changing into steam. The steam collects in the top of the boiler and in the steam dome. The sliding round valve in the steam chest controls the flow of steam through the ports or openings connecting the steam chest with the cylinder. Steam entering the chest passes around the valve and through a port into the expansion chamber of the cylinder. The valve allows the steam to enter the cylinder first at one end, then the other. As the piston moves back and forth, the steam expands through the exhaust pipe out the nozzle and up the stack. The piston is fastened to the end of the piston rod. The other end of the piston rod is fastened to a sliding device called a crosshead. The main rod connects the piston rod with the driving wheel. When enough steam pressure is created in the steam dome, the engineer opens the throttle valve allowing the steam to flow through a pipe to the steam chest. The steam flows past the valve into the cylinder where it expands, forcing the piston ahead of it. The steam escaping through the smokestack gives the locomotive its chugging sound. Locomotives are taken to the engine terminal after every trip. They are moved in the engine terminal by an engineer called a hostler. They are stored and repaired in the roundhouse where they are kept in separate stalls. A small locomotive called a mule or goat is used to move the cold or crippled engine. This one is moving a tender. Roundhouses are so called because of their semicircular shape, which is determined by the curve of the turntable pit. A sand tower stands between the incoming and outgoing tracks of the engine terminal. White dry sand is stored in the tower to fill the sand domes of the locomotive. A valve in the tower is held open by a rope lever. It allows the sand to flow through the pipe into the sand dome. Sand is used for starting locomotives on slippery tracks. It is dumped in front of the drivers from pipes leading down from the sand dome. It is also blown through the fire tubes to clean out the soot to improve the draft of the fire box. Oil burning locomotives fill their fuel tanks from oil penstocks beside the tracks. The fuel oil is stored in large underground tanks. It is forced into the penstock by air pressure. Some large locomotive tenders hold more than 6,000 gallons of oil. Many locomotives burn coal. Coal is loaded into the tenders from overhead hoppers. Railroad locomotives use about one-fifth of all the coal and fuel oil produced in the United States.
Locomotives use a great quantity of water to produce steam. Water pen stocks with swinging spouts stand beside the tracks. Some locomotive tenders carry more than 20,000 gallons of water. It is necessary to refill them several times on long trips. After the locomotive has been serviced, it is run onto the turntable and turned around to its stall. The controls for the turntable are in the small cab on the side of the turning platform. The turntable operator locks the tracks together by forcing a locking bar between the rails. The hostler may not move the locomotive on or off the turntable until the operator motions for him to do so. The turntable operator pilots the locomotive in and out of the roundhouse. Inside the roundhouse, there are many loud hissing sounds made by steam escaping from valves on the locomotive. Columns of smoke rise from the black stacks of the waiting engines. The smoke escapes from openings in the roof called smoke jacks. When a locomotive is called for duty, the hostler backs it out of the stall onto the busy turntable. It is then turned around to the service track. The turntable is a long platform with a track across its center for the locomotive's wheels. It turns on a central pivot. Each end is supported by a wheel which runs on a track around the bottom of the pit. Some tables are moved by electric motors. Others are turned by gasoline motors. Locomotives must pass inspection before they are allowed to leave the terminal. On the service track, the locomotive is carefully checked by federal inspectors as an added safety precaution. Ladders are used to reach the higher parts of the locomotive. The side rods and other moving parts are tested by wringing them with a small hammer. The inspector's trained ears can tell if they are cracked or damaged by the ring of the steel. When the locomotive has been approved, it is again backed onto the turntable and turned around to the outgoing track where it will be groomed for its next job. Railroad men are proud of their iron horses. Locomotives and tenders are carefully washed before each trip. Cleaning chemicals are sprayed from hoses. Long-handled brushes loosen the dirt which is washed away by jets of water. Cleanliness is important to keep the locomotive strong and in good running condition. Sharp sandy grit and dust that would grind away the metal are washed from the drivers and rods with boiling water. Hot water is used to loosen the oil and grease that holds the grit to the working parts of the locomotive. More than 5 million gallons of water, 68,000 pounds of cleaning chemicals, and 38,000 gallons of cleaning oil were used in one year to keep the locomotives clean at this one terminal. After the locomotive has been thoroughly washed, it is carefully wiped dry. Weights are used by the wiper to clean and dry the engine. All the moving parts of the locomotive are oiled to make them work smoothly and reduce wear. Each time the locomotive stops, the engineer may be seen going over his engine with a long nose oil can. Engineers and firemen become very fond of their locomotives. They give them the best of care. When the locomotive is ready, the engineer climbs into the cab. With a full head of steam, the locomotive will chug out of the engine terminal, all shiny and bright, headed for the train yard.